Just before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that Santa Claus would soon be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, except for one little boy tearing gifts into shreds. It was just before midnight. Cole was making a mess with gifts, all meant for his little brother, Nicholas. He would open them up and shake them about. Cole even broke one or two, just to make Nick pout. Left under the tree were presents for Cole and Eve. Untouched, Nick's innocence would never be believed. You see, their parents would think Nick opened all his presents, and his punishment would be enormously tremendous. Cole snickered with glee at the trouble he'd caused. And first upon the naughty list, there he was. And so it was, after he'd snuck back upstairs to bed, the Christmas shadows crawled from the hollow walls and o'er the carpet threads. With gangly claws, these creatures unknown took Cole, Nick, and baby Eve from their home. These mischievous beings just wanted in on Cole's fun. They wanted to ruin Christmas for everyone. Something awoke him, likely the whistling wind as he flew through the air. Nick opened his sleepy eyes to the awful sight of shadowy spirits pulling them through the night sky. Without a second thought, he shouted at Cole. What is to do now? Me? I didn't do anything. The shadows seemed to fly faster and faster. Of course it was you. You're something you shouldn't. And you're just a tattletale. Why don't you just admit it's your fault? I won't. If you said something wrong, Cole, just admit it. They have me. And if anything happens to her mom, dad yeah, will never forgive you. Cole puzzled over Nick's words. Fine, I did do something that was wrong. But there's no way this has anything to do with it. What did you do? I opened up all your Christmas presents and broke some of them too, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just like that, the shadows seemed to disappear, and the children started falling from the night sky so clear. Nick slid down the slanted tree and with gentle hands caught baby Eve. Cole landed face down in the chilly snow, causing his nose and cheeks to have a red glow. You did what to my presence? Nick shouted at Cole. I said I was sorry, and which way do you think leads home? You're the most rotten brother anyone can have. With baby Eve in his arms still sound asleep, Nick turned on his heel and marched further into the woods. Behind his back, Cole made a face and muttered to himself. With no map or compass at hand, Cole trailed after Nick deeper into this unknown land. Not that he would say it, especially to Cole, but Nick was worried they were truly lost, and he was growing cold. After a long while of traipsing through the trees, Cole finally offered to carry baby E. With arms weary from the weight, Nick happily handed Eve over to Cole. Cole snuggled her to his chest, and Nick pulled the blanket more tightly around her, both making sure she was perfectly warm. A little light began to glow. Before it began to grow, 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 Nick dashed behind Cole, who ran behind a tree, and right before their eyes, a creature appeared. It surely seemed friendlier than the shadows before, much brighter and lighter, and it radiated warmth. What do you think? Nick whispered to Cole. I don't know. Try throwing a rock at it. Nick thwacked the back of Cole's head before taking a few steps closer to the creature. Hi there. My name's Nick, and this is my brother Cole and my little sister Eve. I'm really lost. Do you know the way back to our home? With a broad smile and a friendly wave, the creature spoke. Hello, Cole, Nick, and Eve. I'm so very glad to see you. He looked straight at Cole and said, That was very brave of you to escape the Christmas shadows. Nick's jaw dropped. Well, I'm the one who's got us out of this mess. The spirit pointed unerringly at Cole. But it was his honest admission of guilt and most genuine heartfelt apology that sent him away. It was his selfless offer of taking Eve from your tired arms that brought me here to you. I am indeed here to guide you home. Genuine apology? There is no way Cole meant what he said. Nick argued, glancing between Cole and the spirit. The spirit simply said, most matter-of-factly, that those shadows would not have disappeared otherwise. In his arms, the spirit took Eve, 
and the boys hurried beside him, trying to keep pace. Trusting this warm spirit, the children walked behind his great height, keeping near to him for his warmth and light. Soon after their trek through the trees, the boys finally saw something that put them at ease. With a view they'd never had before, they looked down at the valley below. It was a beautiful sight with the city lights aglow. They knew they were on the right track, and by following the spirit, they'd be back. Along the way, Cole's tummy began to rumble with hunger, and so, at the first chance he had, Cole took a big bite out of a delicious-looking mushroom. It is unclear as to who was more surprised, the mushroom or Cole. The mushroom squealed at being eaten, and Cole was equally appalled at having eaten something so alive. What did you do that for? I didn't know you were alive. Well, of course I'm alive. Do you always treat others so disrespectfully? No. Cole insisted, but everyone else rolled their eyes. Well, you ought to be more careful about how you treat others. Otherwise, one day you'll find others taking a bite out of you. Anyway, where are you all off to? We're going home, Nick said. To the people village in the valley below? That's it. Mind if I join you? I need to find new blue mushrooms for a new blue home. I seem to have misplaced mine. The spirit nodded his head. Great, but I don't want to walk next to him. Ah, oh, come on. I'm not going to eat you. Cole complained. How can I trust you after what you did? Cole hung his head and thought hard about what he did. It was so easy to lose someone's trust. A simple mistake, it seemed, is all it took for fellowships to be crushed. Cole couldn't do anything right. At least, that's what he felt. And he wondered what he'd have to do to show that he was both earnest and heartfelt. Approaching a dark cave, Cole took one look at the funny man standing before them and asked, What are you supposed to be? Wrong question. What? Wrong again. I don't get it. What can I do to help you? Cole looked up at the spirit. This guy is crazy. The spirit shook his head and simply repeated the gnome's question. What can I do to help you? What can I do to help you? Cole mocked. Ah, so glad you asked. Come right this way. Frustrated, Cole threw his hands into the air and followed him into a cave that looked more frightening than inviting. This is where we do our work. Helping others is what we do. And we need you to help us. To help others. Follow? Something about helping yourselves? Wrong. We help others. And now we need your help. Cole looked surprised. You really need my help? Correct. We are so busy this year, gathering good wishes and distributing good deeds, that we need someone to take a very special gift to a very special someone. I like gifts. This gift must not be open until it is given to the person it is meant for. This is very important. It must not be opened until then. So I don't even get to know what it is? Cole complained. Correct. But if you do this, I will give you a gift. The most precious gift you will ever receive. Cole nodded that he understood, and he took the wrapped present into his hands with every intention of being good. Of course, he was tempted to open this forbidden gift, but he knew the reward would be far greater if only he could resist. As their journey proceeded, they met all sorts of faces that belonged to trees. Who knew that trees were still alive, just like that little mushroom guy? Cole was just figuring out that there was so much more to the world than simply messing about. This gift belongs to you, I think. Cole proudly set the gift before the great pine tree. Thank you, my friend. And before his eyes, the box opened, and a small seed fell out onto the ground. That's it? Cole demanded. The great tree laughed and said, That little seedling will grow to be as big and tall as I am. But it's important that the little seed is surrounded by others, that will watch over it, carefully, and not I suppose. I see you have your own little seedling that needs you to watch over, careful, and love her. What, Eve? That's not the same thing. It is, for she will be influenced by how you treat her and others, so you must do your best to bring up your seedling. It's a great responsibility, but by doing what is right, you will be greatly rewarded. Reward? Cole was reminded. I'm sorry, Tree, but we have to go. I'm supposed to get a reward for delivering this to you. Do not forget. Responsibility beholds great. What can I do to help you? I delivered your gift. And so, I shall deliver yours. 
who opened it right away and gazed into a beautiful little snow boy. This was the most precious gift I will ever receive. It shows you what is most precious in your life. Never lose sight of it. Look, Cole, we're almost home. Nick pointed toward the end of the cave. Just one minute, Cole said. No, I see you have some blue mushrooms. Will you give them to me? I will trade you these mushrooms for that snow globe. Cole frowned and gazed once more into the snow globe. Never lose sight of it, he whispered. Got it. Okay, let's trade. The gnome smiled in approval and gave Cole the mushrooms. Cole immediately turned to Mushroom and said, I think these are what you've been looking for. Mushroom eyed Cole. What's the catch? No catch. I got them for you. Did you lick them? Cole rolled his eyes and pushed them into the Mushroom's arms. This is the nicest gift anyone's ever given me. Thank you, Cole. I will never forget your generosity. With tears in his eyes, Mushroom gave Cole a great big hug and went his own way. Together, Spirit, Nick, Eve, and Cole made their way through the cave, which led them almost directly to the village. They just had to cross the frozen lake. Cole had the idea to hold hands as they crossed, but halfway there, Nick slipped through a crack in the ice. With all his strength, Cole pulled Nick from the water, all while reassuring his little brother. Don't worry, I've got you. I won't let anything happen to you. It was clear to one and all that he was earnest and heartfelt. What a difference from the naughty boy who first started on this journey. What no one realized was what Cole had seen in that little snow globe, and how possessing it for just mere seconds allowed him to see what he should value most in life. It revealed to him his little sister and little brother, and his mom and dad. These were the most precious things in his life, and as the tree said, he should take care of them all as best as he could. Spirit handed Eve over to Cole. This is where my journey ends, but I see you no longer need me. Just remember, you will always have me. What do you mean? Nick asked. Cole smiled. Haven't you figured it out? He is the spirit of Christmas. Something that will always be with us, so long as we behave. With smiles and farewell hugs, Nick and Cole ran through the village that they knew well, until they reached their home. Nick couldn't contain his surprise, for his big brother was changing right before his eyes. Gone was a selfish, mischief-maker, and in his place was, well, what a brother should be. And Nick was sure his parents would agree. Sure enough, when they got home, Cole confessed to opening presents that were not his own. He said he was sorry, offered to give his own Christmas gifts to Nick, and hugged them all with a great big squeeze. Cole helped Nick put his gifts back together, using tape and glue, even nails and screws. Their parents were so surprised and pleased to see Cole and Nick get along so well. The sight of them together made their hearts swell. They wondered what had gotten into Cole to make him change so. They surmised that perhaps he was simply getting into the spirit of Christmas. Little did they know, the spirit of Christmas changed more than just Cole. The spirit of Christmas had changed them all.